This is for my friends out in Kansas City, my good friend. Uh, I'm gonna change the wheel bearings in my trailer tire. He's been wanting to uh, change his bearings in his camper, so I would, he wanted me to do a video for him, so this is a video for you. And I'm supporting the Hawaiian shirt, so let's get bet ready. Make sure you chalk your trailer wheels before you jack up your trailer. Chalk it in the front, chalk it in the back. That'll keep it from moving when you jack it up. And be safe. So, first of all, you're gonna want to uh, break loose your lug nuts. Just get them loose. Then you're gonna wanna jack up the trailer. Just high enough so your wheel spins. Then you can either use a ratchet, take these off. I'm gonna use an impact because I'm lazy. This lug nuts here, it took a 19 millimeter socket. I don't know what yours is gonna be, hard to say. So take your tire off. Get it off this side for now. Then you're gonna get yourself a little hammer. I got a little dead blow mallet. You just take it, gonna hit it on an angle, pop the cap off, might hit a few more times. You kind of want to hit on an angle, just kind of drive it back and forth until it comes off. Then you got side cuts. You're going to want to take, bend the cotter pin. Pull that out. your nut 12 inch crescent or you can use the channel locks just take that loose put that in there you got a washer so we're just gonna grab a hold of the whole drum pull it out your bearings are inside the drum Put your washer in your cap, that way you don't forget that. Uh, this is your outer bearing. You're gonna wanna see what the number is on your axle. I already ordered the bearings for mine, but the number will be stamped right there on the bearing. So, and you wanna, if you're changing your bearings out, you wanna keep your old bearings, just in case. I mean, it's a good thing, just to, if there's nothing wrong with them, just put them in a container and slide them in your camper. That way, if you do lose a bearing on the road, you got a bearing that'll get you by until you get to a store and get new ones. So, now we got the hub off. You got seal. Um, you can look at your brakes here. Look at them, see if they got any wear on them. Um, they usually don't go bad that often, so unless you're doing a lot of traveling. So if you don't have a vice, which I'm not sure he does, uh, I'm gonna try something out here, but I think you could take this, put it back on the rim, so it kind of holds it in place a little bit. Um, you can buy a seal puller, they pull the seal out, they make little seal pullers. I got a bar I use that I pull seals out with, but, 
think you can also use a claw hammer to get it out and it might be pretty easy. So just take the claw hammer, kind of shove it underneath the seal. You might have to put lug nuts on this side so then it doesn't move. We'll just throw maybe two lug nuts on just to hold it in place. I mean, if you got a vise, you can put it up in the vise. Might be easier. We'll try it this way. Try it away with someone ain't got nothing to do it with. So, sit it up on the. Get in there and just prop and pop it out. That worked pretty good, actually. Better than put it in a vise. So, see, I learned something today. So, then there's your inner bearing, which is a different size. Like I said, if you look on the back of the bearing, it'll tell you what size it is. So, now you got your race. You got your races inside here that you have to replace. Wipe it out real quick. Get some of that old grease out of there. So this is your race right here. So you're gonna need to pop that out. Um, you can use a punch, a drift. Uh, you, I don't know how, you could get a bearing puller, but I usually just take a punch and punch them out, just work my way around. So I'll, what I'll do is I'll punch out the outer race first then I'll flip it over and then punch this one out. So what you do, you get your drift and you're gonna wanna set it down inside here and you're gonna wanna catch the lip of that race that's the outer race right now. So you can see how I take the drift down until it stops. You're just catching the lip of that other race. So you just want to give it a smack. And then take it out. Take it off here. Maybe I'm getting too much bounce. It was bouncing a little bit, so I took it off the tire. Just set the hub on a piece of wood. that race broke so that race was junk anyways so we'll finish taking it the rest of the way out or may I do it on a vice You can see there's no race in there now. So that'll be where your new race goes in. This is the old race. I don't think I've ever had one break taking it out. So now it's time to take out this race here. So we're going to flip it over, do the same thing. Just kind of work your way around. And that one came out easier than the other one did. See, that's how this was come out, solid one. So. 
So that's the old race. And then over there. Now you're gonna wanna get some brake clean, anything. Get in there, clean it up. If your punch did make a nick or something, like this one here, it's got a little nick in it. Just take like a file or something, try to get that little burr off. Just run your finger on there and you could feel if it's not smooth, you wanna get that little ding off. That's probably from the punch, punching it out. Um, it happens. Like I say, you can get a bearing press tool uh, with some jaws that would go in there and pull it out. Pretty expensive. So, um, or you can just tap it out. But when you tap it, you gotta make sure that you go around even because you don't want to cock that race inside the housing because then it'll lock up. And you also, if you get it, if you get the race cocked in there, you start taking material out of here and then your race won't fit tight. So I'm gonna get this thing cleaned up and then we will assemble the new race. So the wife said I should have safety glasses on and she's right again, I just didn't have mine. So, you want to spray it out. Use brake clean, parts cleaner, whatever you got. Get her good and clean. That way you can look at the housing really good too. But I'll flip it over. Clean this out. Get all that grease out of there first. Oh, I'm inspecting this. I see I got a little burr right there on the inside. So I'm gonna just take that file, just kind of knock it down. This is like a half round file. Just lightly go over it. And I got a little bit of sandpaper here, or emery cloth. Make sure there's no burrs. All of them are smooth. Yeah, if you get access to a press or something, you can try pressing this race out too. I do have a press, but I want to do it the hard way. So, people that don't have one can do it. I'm just lightly going over it. And you don't want to take a bunch of material out because then the rake won't fit right. So. I mean, if you got a good brass drift, might not be a bad idea, then you wouldn't actually score this up. My brass drifts were kind of beat up and I wasn't really grabbing the race too well, uh, so I, I used the steel one. Then you're gonna wanna spray it out again. Clean it out, make sure you don't have any metal shavings or anything in there. Just take a break hold. Close it real good. The other side. Is that real good? We can put the new races in. So we've got our new bearings and race and seals. I order them from the actual company of the Axle. I looked at the company and bought it straight through them. Um, I think it was on Amazon though, but it was distributed through them. And these are China, wonderful. So um, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna press or tap. I prefer pressing the new races in. Um, 
press the races in to the housing. So the cone side, this part here, will be facing you. The thin piece will be facing you. The thick goes inwards. So you take that and I have this press tool that I bought on uh, Amazon. It was like 70 bucks and that should fit if I find the right one. That's it. That's kind of it. Let's see. Maybe this tool doesn't have the right size. So, so it doesn't come with the right size. So what you can do is you can take your old race, wipe it off. You want to get all the junk in there. Take it and set it on top. And you can take that and you can either A, hammer it in. If you got access to a press, the press would be easier. I do have a press here, but I'm doing it the hard way. So, it looks like it's down all the way. I'm actually gonna put it in the press though and make sure it is um, to double check. Cause you wanna make sure that race is seated all the way down. That's the biggest thing. Um, so that's what I'm gonna do right now. Take it over here. So I'm gonna use my pressing tool, the bearing press tool and I'm gonna check to make sure that it's seated. Um, if you use an old race and set it up there, if your race is recessed a long way down in there, you could potentially get this one stuck. So mine doesn't go that far, so it's not gonna get stuck. Yours probably won't either, but just to, to note, um, sometimes you can take like, a cutoff wheel grinder, make a slice in this, and that'll keep that loose. So then when you, if you do press it in there, you use, it's easily to pop out. And I can show you how to do one, but, um, so I'm setting it up like this, paper side down onto the new race. That way it's got a little bit wider space for my bearing press and puller to fit. So what I'm doing is take that, that on there, washer, this nut, now you're going to want to make sure this is square, this is going to be the hardest part, using this press tool, make sure that this, that bottom race is seated. This is seated. And that's seated. So once you got your race, everything lined up, Square. You can press it, and this should tell me if I'm seated or not. And it is, it's all the way seated. So, I'll take this off. Off. 
and there's your race in there. So you can see it's all evenly pressed in and seated. Now for the next one. So now we got your outer race bearing. hammer and I'm just gonna tap it around a little bit and make sure that it's squared up oh she's yelling at me I don't have my safety glasses on okay. she's yelling at me god then Size. And of course not. So I'll press that in a little ways and then go from there. <clears throat> Just the same as before. something know to press it all the way in because this press doesn't fit in that one either. Like I say, normally I don't use my big press to press it in. You can see how the bearing is, or the race is going in. But now it stopped because, because this puller, I don't have the right slug to go in all the way. So, Gonna have to improvise. So what I ended up doing is went and took the old race, cut a slot in it to release that pressure, like I was talking about. This is what I normally do. Uh, you take like a, a grinder or something, cut off wheel, just make one slice in it. I just pulled that out that race since I made that release relief cut pulls right out of there so now you got your new race in there cone side facing out and it's pressed in all the way so it's now time to pack the new bearings with grease and we'll put this bad boy well we got to put a seal on the back too but we'll do that after we get the back bearing in packed with grease We'll go from there. All right, so we are gonna do a how to pack a bearing. Take that grease right there, put it in your hand. You can wear gloves, whatever. Um, take this bearing and just kind of scoop it, scoop it, scoop it. Just kind of scrape it on your hand 
They do make bearing packers. Just keep scooping it in. Working your way around until you start to see, see that grease coming out? It's right coming out of the, the actual barrels. That's what you want. That way you know you got the grease pushed all the way through and it's just keep rotating it around until you start getting grease coming out of all your spots. All right, so we got grease. The bearings are packed now. The grease. These are good wheel bearing grease too. These are quality. When you take it, smear a little bit of grease there on the face, and then set your bearing to your race. Now, if you're just if you're not replacing your bearings, and you're just cleaning the bearings up. Make sure you keep that bearing with that race. So if you're just Re-greasing your bearings and cleaning them up and checking them. You can leave the race in, but just make sure that bearing goes back with that race because it's important that you keep the bearings and the races as a set. So that's how they sell them. That's how you should do them. Um, so next, we'll go ahead and grease this one up real quick. And then we got to get the seal and put the seal in. And we're almost done. But again, I mean, if you have somebody that you know has a press, use a press. It's a lot easier. And you know your seat is all the way with the race and everything. Or just go to Harbor Freight and buy you a cheap one. That's all that is. Just a cheapy Harbor Freight one. I mean, nothing special. So I'm gonna set that over here out of the way. Because you really don't want to get grease in here. We'll clean all that up too, but I'm gonna get the seal. The kit I bought came with a new seal, braces, bearings. And your seals do have numbers on them right there. If you wear gloves, then you can just take your gloves off. You don't have to wipe your hands off. But I like the grease in my hands because it moisture in there. It moisturizes them. Makes them soft. Hammer. And work your way around. Or if you got press, press it in. So I just use some of my bearing press tools and I just set it on there. I mean, you can press it in with your, with your bearing press, if you have a bearing press. You're just wanting to take that seal so it's flush. So since I got this larger diameter piece here, it's gonna stop right at the end of the hub. And that should be where you want to seal. Nice and flat and in there and pretty. So it's flush there and that's where you want to stop with your seal. So if you're hammering it in there, that's where you want to stop. Press it in there, that's where you want to stop. So now I will clean this up. So I'm gonna spray all this down with some brake clean on the rotor. I mean I should have done it probably when 
I had the racism bearings out. It's not a big deal. So before I put this on, I'll wipe off the shaft. Make sure it's clean. Don't want any kind of dirt or debris. Inside. And then you can actually inspect your axle then to make sure nothing looks damaged. Um, this is your magnet that controls your brakes. And what that magnet does is when you hit your brakes, that magnet actually sucks to this side of the plate here. And when it sucks to there, then it activates your brakes and it pulls on this cam and the cam cams out your brakes. So you can just look at your brakes, look at your pads. They got plenty of life on them. Pretty good. Everything looks pretty clean. So next is to install your drums and your bearings back on. So you take that bearing, just push it in there. I did grease this like I did the other side, a little bit of grease in there. Let's take your bearing, set it in there. And then I like to just take my finger and just kind of go around this bearing and make sure it's squared up and it's seated. And you just lift it up. Back on. Watch so that bearing doesn't fall out. I mean, you can slide that on without putting that bearing in there first, but I always just put them in together. Um, kind of keeps everything centered. And so you got your bearing pushed up all the way. So now you want to get your washer that you have. Clean that off. Make sure that don't have any dirt or anything on it. Install your washer. Install your nut. Okay, get your crescent wrench or socket if you got a socket. Or channel locks, whatever, wherever you want. And just take it and you just want a little bit of pressure. So you know you seated the bearing, everything's seated. So right now, it's kind of hard, it doesn't move that good. So then you just want to back it off a little bit, take it up with your finger. Now I'm fighting, the, you, it's fighting the brake, but everything is free. You don't want any in and out play. And so then now you gotta line up that hole where your cotter pin goes. So what I do is then I just go up and go just a little bit until that hole lines up. And just make sure that your everything moves free. It's the biggest thing. Um, Feels like I got a brake dragging, so I might have to adjust that, but I can do that later. Uh, so now you got your new cotter pin. And you just slide that through the hole. It's like I gotta turn this just a little bit more. Slide that through the hole. It's actually a small cutter bin. I don't know why. It's not that small one. But you get the package. So. And then you take side cuts, bend that up. And then what I do is I take this one, nip it off a little bit. Some people will just cut that one off. But I like to nip a little bit off, just so enough I can bend it backwards, back, back in there. Because you got your cap that's got to go in there yet. Like a cover up. So. so you can just take that, take a screwdriver, kind of just bend it up so it's up and out of the way, so then the cap will slide in. So, and just make sure your bearing spins. Just 
spins pretty free, pretty easy. Like I said, I think that one brake might need adjusted a little bit, but it might just wear in too. It'll be fine. And then take your cap. Cap's all cleaned. Make sure they looks like they never even greased it. Sometimes you'll have a greasable cap. This one isn't, so. You must have to pull it off every time you grease it. Some of them have a, a grease fitting on here. So then you can just grease your bearing. And then sometimes if the shaft's not, doesn't have a fitting in it, and then you grease the cap, then usually your cotter pin is straight up and down too. This one's off to the side because they got the grease fitting in there that would grease the axle. So that's how that's greased. And then you just take your cap. Tap it in. And your bearings are done. Bearings are done. But you don't, when you do that, that nut, you don't want to crank it, crank it, crank it, and leave it tight, tight. Because that puts too much pressure on your bearings. So you want to crank it in a little bit. You get it tight to seat the bearings. Make sure everything's seated. Then back it off. Run it in by finger, by hand, until it stops. Make sure you don't have any in play and just go a little bit to the next hole, a little bit to the hole. And that'll, that should set your your bearings about fine, about perfect. So, and then the next is you put your tire on and tighten up your lug nuts. A little chilly today. The door open to get the fresh air. It's a little chilly. Put your nuts on. Nuts on. impact on the lowest setting that way I don't over tighten them. And just gradually take them in. say I don't know really what the torque is on these I probably have to look it up I'm guessing around 100 foot pounds this would be my guess most of your cars are 100 foot pounds so and they're usually the same size stud so. I'm just gonna snug them down for now because I'm gonna take it back off to look at that break but I just wanted to make a video for you so then you can go ahead and change your bearings Feel like it do it at your own risk and if I get there maybe I'll change them but I don't know when I'm gonna be in Kansas anytime soon so Not too bad of a job. 
like I said, if you got a press, or you got access to a press, that's the way to do it. Press, press your braces in and out. Makes it easier. Um, that way you're not risking damaging your hub or anything. Uh, and you, you know that you get your races seated all the way. Because you want your races to be seated. Otherwise, eventually it'll beat back and forth and you end up ruining your bearings. So That's it. Hope you get her done. Bees are out. It's a nice sunny day. Temperature finally got up. Got some happy bees. Still winter time though.